Harry Potter is Luke Skywalker, Dumbledore is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Voldemort is Anakin as Vader without the suit, but in an Emperor Palpatine role. This is my review for the Harry Potter franchise. A. B. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. This is my review for the Harry Potter film franchise. So for this particular review, I wanted to share my thoughts of the films now having seen every single one of them. So prior to this watching as a bit of backstory, I had only seen the first film and the last film. I had a vague memory while watching the second film that I it kind of I had seen it, it looked familiar, so I think at some point I had actually seen it, but I had forgotten all about it because by the time I was done I had remembered enough of it to say that it is something that I had watched more with more than a passing recollection or even watching bits and pieces on TV or something, or maybe I watched it with friends or something along those lines, but um, basically, I had not having seen most of the films and not having watched them in order, I thought I would watch them to see what I think of the film franchise and how it holds up. Um, so I'm going to start my comparison as, or start my review as a comparison with Star Wars in that it feels like an inverse to the Star Wars franchise in that Star Wars has an overarching story that works, but the individual chapters kind of feed into it because there's enough elements in there but when you look watch it enough when you watch the individual chapters and episodes you don't necessarily get enough of a complete story to for the stories to make sense whereas in Harry Potter the individual stories make sense but the overarching story is kind of flimsy and vague you know that the there's a battle between Harry Potter and Voldemort coming but the bits and pieces that you get in the story are kind of infrequent and, in, and far between so you know that there's going to be a battle between the two um the things like the horcruxes are not really mentioned until the very uh, end of the series and until the deathly hollows part one um you realize that there's a lot of magic going on but you don't really know the significance or powers of stuff until the very end so when you're watching the films they all work well individually but there's not enough development with the Voldemort side for me to really care about him as a villain so when you for example watch Star Wars you realize that um, Palpatine for example is a very shrewd individual and you kind of want to see where he goes with everything that he's doing so when you start with the Phantom Menace and get into the Rise of Skywalker you see a very large overarching progression in his powers and abilities whereas if you watch one, any one of the singular films you kind of you're left wanting more in the story so the individual films give just enough for you to want to care about doing that with Harry Potter and watching them in watching the first film, I was like, oh, okay, cool, this this Voldemort guy is going to be a very important piece of the puzzle, I want to know more. But over the course of the franchise, you there are, there's a lot of time and energy spent in um, Harry Potter ga gaining his powers, but then you get all these other side characters, which are developed well, so I'm not really saying that, that none of that, any of that was progressive poorly, but there's very minimal time spent in developing Voldemort as a character, so a lot of things you, see, or you hear about him are spent in hearsay and um, artifacts and things that he left behind, so you don't really know or for me I didn't really care that anyone that he was coming back or anything like that until the very end of the franchise when we start seeing him to actually take over and implement his plan to take over Hogwarts and um, get Harry Potter um, into a battle with him so in general the final two films were fine but for me the films could have been um, reduce or shorten in 
the number from I think the seven or eight that there were into maybe six films. So I would leave the Sorcerer's Stone alone because it's a good introduction to the franchise of films, the story, and the characters. Um, then maybe leave Chamber of Secrets alone because you get a little bit of progression or good enough progression with uh, the House of Slytherin and some of the more character development and a good continuation there. Um, from there, I would probably combine the Prisoner of Azkaban and the Goblet of Fire because, um, or maybe F Prisoner of Azkaban and the Order of the Phoenix, just because those stories are pretty, are kind of continuous with, e with each other and make sense. So I would have probably made Goblet of Fire the third film, then combine Prisoner of Azkaban and Order of the Phoenix because with the introduction of um, Sirius Black, that whole story arc into um, the Order of the Phoenix seems to make a lot more sense. Um, and then Half-Blood Prince was a good con introduction and continuation as far as um, um, Snape being the Half-Blood Prince and then the um, introduction into the um, court of Voldemort and then combine the Deathly Hallows because my biggest thing there was uh, with the introduction of the Horcruxes that seemed to be fine but I would have preferred knowing more about those sooner and I'll get into why I'm okay with it as well in a second but the Deathly Hallows didn't seem like they needed to be split into two films they could have just as easily been one film so there was a lot of panning shots, overarching shots, lingering shots, and things like that. So the films felt like they dragged on for more than they needed to. So it could have just been one film. So by combining some of the storylines and arcs, the progression could have been made a lot better. So for me, um, I feel like the Prisoner of Azkaban storyline with Sirius Black could have um, also on the flip side presented more as far as more storyline as far as Voldemort and some of the things that were going on with him rather than a lot of the progression that happened in the Half-Blood Half Prince. So there's that and then it feels like as Dumbledore being the Obi-Wan Kenobi of the franchise there was a lot of uh, withholding of information. Um, Limited, limited sharing of information with Harry Potter, kind of like we saw with um, Obi-Wan and Luke in Empire Strikes Back. So that's kind of why, for me, Harry Potter didn't... A lot of the stories and information could have been presented as far as Dumbledore and some of the other teachers and present a lot more information to the viewers even though it was not presented to Harry and his friends it could have been presented with each other so for me that would have made the films that much better and redo some of the lingering shots and extra time spent on the side characters or introduce them after they're brought in with or after they're tied in with the story with Voldemort so while the individual st and so that for me that goes back to while the films were not bad individually it feels like they did not really um lend themselves well to the overarching story arc and in general they were ge very unevenly done so um if i was to narrow down the story or the story or films to watch i would probably say watch chamber of secrets then jump into half blood prince and then the deathly hallows for the both parts so you kind of get a trilogy as far as what happens um the rest of the films provide individual bits of information as far as what's going on but not enough to warrant entire films around them so by combining some of the story arcs and movie some of the sto um, stories or some of the inf bits of inf stories sooner it could have worked better but for me you know by by the time i got to half blood friends i w was really wondering when we're gonna get more of Voldemort. what's going on why haven't we even seen enough of him we get an early look i think but not in or we get an early look with um in chamber of secrets but that is it really about it. it's like um getting emperor palpatine or um chancellor palpatine in episode one but not but then not seeing him until again until a new hope or empire strikes back 
at which point you're wa kind of wondering what's going on or where he's at or what who's pulling the strings but then really only getting you get a lot more for example Anakin and, and then Darth Vader um, Grand Moff Tarkin the uh, Trade Federation and all these other side characters but not seeing the main villain that Luke has to ultimate and even Anakin has to ultimately destroy later so if we did not have that progression of Palpatine over the films it would have been a cool, you would have said, or I would have said, he's a cool character, but why should I care about him as the Emperor? Because we have very little information about him. And same thing, and that's basically what it, ha it feels like happened here in this franchise, is that we get Voldemort early, but we, then we don't see him or get enough of him until later in the franchise, so why should I care about him as a villain? Because all of the development that we get from him happened later in the franchise. And as I'm talking, it's a similar thing that we see in, for example, the Mortal Kombat film where Shang Tsung as the main villain is presented early and then um, various bits of his scheme and planning and villainy are presented over the course of the film. So it presents a case for wanting, or it presents a case for him being the villain. So I kind of didn't see that here, so that kind of throws me off liking the films and enjoying the story arc overall so if i was to grade this franchise i'd probably give it about a b minus uh, to a c plus so right about the 80 percent range um overall uh or in overall in good individual stories in the films but as far as an overarching story it was generally very uneven so it kind of made me or i basically got bored in watching the film so um basically like i said by the time we get to half blood prince i wanted more voldemort and didn't feel like we got enough of him to want me to care about him and then everything was dumped into those last three films so it reminded me of that um meme about voldemort being unable to take over a high school because Yes, it's, it, it kind of rings true just because there was not enough development of him over the course of the films or what he was up to or him pulling the strings with these various characters for me to care about it. So, care about him enough of a, as a villain to make me care about them. I care about him. Um, and then the other thing is, is that I, I like the progression of Hermione and um, Ron as far as them generally staying apart and um hating each other and then growing into a relationship with each other and how ron cares about hermione and i like the little touch towards the end when ron pulls up the memory he has of hermione saying something about things being on the map for the room of reflections or whatever that hidden room was called and we see that she realizes he's been paying attention and listening to her all along even though he's kind of haphazard and um goofy about things so he was kind of it feels like between him and i forget the guy who's always clumsy who stopped at them who stopped the trio at the in um the sorcerer's stone but he find he was kind of like the han solo of the film where he or sorry not the han solo but he was the samwise gamgee of the films where he was a good supporting character he, even though he might have been hated we have um basically he sees what's going on he and he tries to make up people understand he still comes back because he's a, he's a good friend like that so he wasn't really the Han solo of the franchise he was he was the um samurai sam ganji of the series um the favorite character of mine i'd probably want to say was um dobby um just because and hagrid i want to say just because they were probably the most relatable characters. I liked their acting and performance, and overall, their acting just worked. So that's actually all for the, there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything related, relatable that says that, hey, you're wrong, you're, you're right, or this is how they handled it better, better in the novels and the films, or something I missed, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. 
And of course, you can support the show in a variety of ways, but the best place to get um, early access to upcoming content and bonus content and um, patron-exclusive posts and things like that, be sure to visit patreon.com slash one But that's all there is for this review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.